The abyssal zones of the Earth's oceans are a mysterious and not well understood place. Being pitch black and with extraordinary water pressure due to its immense depth, it is hard to imagine that anything could survive in this alien environment. But as you'll come to know, equally alien animals do in fact manage to survive in this inhospitable environment. And due to their extreme habitats, these organisms have evolved to look and behave in ways unlike anything familiar to us on land. This is part two in this series. You can watch the first, which is a fair bit older here, if you want to learn more about these mysterious animals. Continuing on, here are some more of the most terrifying abyss-dwelling animals. Marine hatchetfish, not to be confused with the unrelated as more commonly known freshwater hatchetfish, are small, deep-sea ravened fish of the stomiform subfamily Stunopticino, meaning that they're more closely related to animals like dragonfish and viperfish. Found in tropical, subtropical and temperate waters of the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans, marine hatchetfish are a diverse group of fish, ranging in size from the small polypnus deno at around 2.8cm in length and the largest being 12cm, being the absolutely named giant hatchetfish. There are 45 different species, and depending on a variety of factors, can be found from depths ranging from 600 to 4,500 feet. They get their name from their peculiar body shapes, which are very deep and being extremely laterally compressed. Somewhat resemble hatchets, which gives them their name, with their thorax being the blaze and the caudal peduncle being the handle. Their pelvic bones are also tilted downwards in a vertical position, also having large eyes that point upwards. These eyes allow them to view their prey from below, with their tubular shape also producing a binocular field that also helps to increase their depth perception, allowing them to better discern the silhouettes of prey moving overhead against the slightly brighter upper waters. They feed on plankton, smaller fish and crustaceans, swimming towards the ocean's surface to better find said food. They feed on plankton, smaller fish and crustaceans, swimming towards the ocean's surface to better find said food. Said feeding typically takes place at night, with some species swimming up from depths of 1,500 metres to do so, joining their fellow Twilight Zone neighbours to feed, and then submerging back down to the depths when the sun rises. To further assist in both camouflaging themselves from their prey and predators, hatchetfish have the ability to produce lights like many other such animals through a process known as bioluminescence, with said lights being produced in cells that are known as photophores. Located along their bodies, said light is produced via chemical reactions, with most of the photophores being positioned downwards. This is known as counter-illumination, with hatchetfish being able to produce lights that's of the same intensity as the faint lights coming from above, effectively making them invisible, masking their silhouettes. The patterns of lights in some instances differ slightly between hatchetfish species, leading some scientists to believe that they may play a role in courtship. The great depth of the habitat though means that studying this remains very difficult however, Deep sea lizardfish, unrelated to the shallower dwelling lizardfish of the otherwise same name, belong to the order or lopiforms, being distinguished by the flatter heads and more curved teeth, with them living at depths from 600 to 3,500 metres. There are two species of deep sea lizardfish in the family Bathysauridae, with them also being the closest relatives of the bizarre telescope fish, which look like someone who hasn't left the house in months. Moderately sized fish, at about 78 cm in length, they are ambush predators that sit on the ocean floor with their heads slightly elevated, with them snatching up animals that pass by with the three rows of needle-like teeth. They are also known to have an expansive liver, which constitutes up to 20% of their total weight, which helps as an energy reserve between their feeding given how sparse their environment is. Deep sea lizardfish are also hermaphrodites, meaning that they have both male and female sex organs, which is thought to be an adaptation to their low population densities so that when two individuals encounter one another, they are still able to mate regardless, rather than having to wait for one of the opposite sex. Drifting through the sea is an animal that on first glance, and even after several, looks just like a jellyfish, but is in fact something else entirely. Pelagotheria natatrix, which means swimming sea cucumber, are actually echinoderms, closer to starfish than to any Nidarian. The only member of their family being Pelagotheridae, they are monotypic, only being represented by the single species, and are most definitely very interesting. They were first named in the 19th century, but were very poorly known, and for a long time they were only known from a few battered specimens brought up in scientific trawl nets. Their soft bodies meant that the remains were destroyed easily, and so it wasn't until 2014 until more was learned about them. 
During the course of nine dives between American Samoa and Hawaii around this time, up to 100 of these swimming sea cucumbers were spotted, at depths ranging from 196 to 4,440 metres, and often in areas with very low oxygen levels, which has been theorised as a tactic to avoid predation, since little whales can survive in these regions that could actively hunt them. Their survival in these regions could be due to their body composition, as the gelatinous form, composed mostly of water with a small amount of collagen, requires little energy to make and maintain. They are also naturally buoyant and don't need to waste precious energy and oxygen swimming to stay afloat, as they can just drift around. At about 16 centimetres in length, out of the roughly 1,200 species of known sea cucumbers, Pelagotheria is the only one known to be pelagic, aka being found in open water not near any form of substrate. To do so, they have large, umbrella-like swimming appendages which are supported by a ring of around 12 highly modified oral tentacles from their tube feet, with the mouths being above them. Alongside the tentacles, they also have a veil surrounding them that can be contracted, allowing them to propel themselves through the water column. The last animal I'll be going over in this video is the flabby whalefish, which are among the deepest living fish known, with some species being recorded at depths in excess of 3,500 metres or 11,500 feet. The largest of them can reach up to 40 centimetres in length and have very reduced or vestigial eyes, instead having a well-developed lateral line system full of sensory pores which run down the length of their body, which allows them to detect vibrations in the water column very effectively. Named after their baleen whale-like bodies of the adult females, they have especially large mouths, and their dorsal and anal fins are also set further back than most other fish. They are a bright red to orange colour, which is an adaptation, interestingly enough, to remain better camouflaged, since longer, electromagnetic wavelengths, red and orange, cannot penetrate at the depths at which they exist. And as such, animals which live in these environments cannot see said wavelengths, essentially rendering flabby whalefish effectively invisible. What is most remarkable about these fish is their extreme example of sexual dimorphism, which is so distinct that the larval, female and male morphologies were all thought to be in different families. Now of course, considered just one, being Cetomimidae. Their stomachs are highly distendable, allowing adult females to pursue prey otherwise too large for them to eat, although males are unusual in that they do not need to eat at all after their juvenile phase, as their jaws fuse shut and their esophagus and stomach disappear. To continue to survive, their livers increase in size, with them surviving by metabolising the digested remains of prey they ate while still in their younger form that still resides in their intestines something which may have evolved due to the lack of plentiful foods in their environment. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.